So, item number two under subject updates is the Southern Views Fire Debriefing and Emergency Management Update. So, I'm going to turn that over to John Shelwitz, our fire chief. Unit, and as it says right there, it was already about 60 to 100 acres within eight minutes. 
Um, the fire was being wind driven. It went up the hill pretty quick. And immediately, if people can see here, right there, those are our big communication towers that are in use. Um, very large infrastructure, not just for the county, uh, for state level, uh, federal level, uh, emergency, uh, emergency responders have a lot of their stuff over here, Cal Fire, uh, DEA, CIA, FBI, a lot of stuff up there. Uh, huge site, very important for us to make sure we didn't burn that down. So immediately that was my, my priority to make sure that we did not lose that uh, and trying to redirect that fire. Uh, as the fire grew, obviously, uh, I'll explain something about Sutter County. We're different than almost, well, we're different than any other county in the state except for one other county, which is San Francisco County, when it comes to fire operations. Um, Cal Fire, uh, because of the state fire agency, has responsibilities in every county except for Sutter County and San Francisco County. Meaning they don't have, I don't have that resource in my pocket to unlimited, just make unlimited orders uh, of resources. So we had a challenge from the get-go. Um, getting resources here, the financial way of how we pay for those things. Um, but as we get to the end of this, uh, this incident would have been well over $2 million to run this incident. This was, and this was only a day and a half of the incident. So we had a lot of resources, we had a lot of help on getting that. But, Basically, so that you understand, we have to request resources very specifically how we do it, uh, and they don't have to give them to us because we don't have Cal Fire here. They don't have any responsibility here. The only small piece of property within the county that is actually a state-owned property is in the very dead center of the view. It's called Peace Valley Park, and that's run by state parks. Uh, and we actually, at Southern County Fire, have a fire contract with that Cal Fire has responsibility in that. So we were already up against a lot of challenges right off the bat. Um, obviously with staffing issues within the bottom line department, myself, um, looking at trying to fill positions and also we run very thin with the amount of staffing we have within our department, um, which is something we're trying to work forward to find out how we can fix that issue. With all the agencies that were in the county, um, as I put direction off the board and updates, with all these fires going on, I had two strike teams out, which is five engines and a strike team leader on different fires. We were all fully staffed. We, didn't, we were not at a situation where those strike teams being out influenced how many people we could get into the piece and why we caught this fire, why it took the fire has to be. It had nothing to do with that. Uh, so I'm going to get that out there too. So basically, as this fire moved through, uh, we can't get bigger. I did record to request resources from Cal Fire. Um, and as people saw probably through the internet, uh, we had uh, air, aircraft, we had helicopters, four air tankers, uh, we have what's called air attack, it's basically a boss in the air. Uh, and I got a lot of ground resources from uh, Cal Fire to help with the overhead level, which is my level, more of the command level stuff. Uh, worked great with the, as you can see right here, tag team with the uh, Sheriff's Department. Uh, a great response from our dispatchers. They were very overwhelmed, as you, as you would only imagine. Um, the Sutter Buttes, obviously, is the center of Sutter County. Everybody looks to the Sutter Buttes. And when you see a large smoke column coming out of the Sutter Buttes, obviously, everybody in the uncle is concerned about that because it's our prime joy. So there's a lot of calls coming into the public uh, communication center. Um, they were able to get me a command van, which is uh, jointly staffed uh, by our staff and the Sheriff's Department, uh, which was a great resource. Um, and I'll get into a lot of the thank yous here in just a little bit. But as the fire uh, increased, uh, we moved into a situation where the fire went up, started going up towards the uh, towers. We attacked the fire from the air very heavily. It was a very remote fire for us to be able to make access to. Not good access on this fire. Um, this fire grew greatly because we couldn't even make access to it. We had to watch it burn a lot of ground. The good thing about when this fire burned, not many homes, not many uh, infrastructure except for the uh, towers, the, the towers, sorry, the towers up here, and multiple gas stations, or gas stations, gas wells, sorry, um, that are in the views. But we really, we had a grass on and we really didn't have anything out in front of it. Wind shifted about right in the middle of this fire. The wind shifted, and there's four residences to the right here, you guys look over on the map. Four residences to the west on the pass road, which immediately this fire started burning this way towards the west. So it went off this picture this way. 
uh, which changed from what's going on in this picture. As you can tell, the wind's blowing it that way. If you had this picture bigger, you'd see a big fire over here. Um, it pushed off that way towards Rockland Canyon. We're concerned that at that point, uh, with the help of the Sheriff's Department and New City PD, we were able to get uh, officers in there immediately to evacuate the four residences off Pass Road, and then also do advisory evac evacuations of Kellogg Road in case we had a wind shift to the east, and also off Westview on the far west side. We were able to get them advisory. Um, and as we talked about during the floods, you only go over the advisory versus. Okay, okay so everybody understand what's the difference between a mandatory and advisory? Uh, we've, that's been a great topic for the past few years of how low to put evacuations and how you say it. Mandatory evacuations is get out. And it's your responsibility to get out. We have imminent danger to you, and that's why we say that. A uh, evacuation advisory was more put in the role to we have a problem, it could affect you, we want you to be ready to go at a moment's notice. If you want to leave, it would be highly suggested. That's where an advisor comes in. So for everybody to understand. But I think it's important to mention too with the mandatory evacuations is once we call for those mandatory evacuations, we cannot physically force people from their homes. But we do have the authority to not let them back in. So sometimes people think that when we call for mandatory because we do go house to house, we call, we post it on social media, but we can't make Sheriff's Office 
I cannot thank them. The mo the mo I mean, they were extremely supportive from the side of just trying to keep people out of abuse um, and keep them out of our operation with their traffic control, to the evacuations, uh, and to the logistical support with uh, communications and obviously the uh, uh, command bank that currently we have in the county. Uh, general services, my communication uh, within these incidents is I have something to do in the field and I communicate with Brenna and the CEO's office and the PIOs uh, on the side and Brenna can kind of go into that. So with the county departments, because um, they're typically called into the emergency operations center, but with a fire like this, because it's not Cal Fire's jurisdiction, we also, the EOC, needs to support the incident. So the county department has not only supported us at the EOC level, they supported all the operations that were going on um, at the command post, such as like quarter potties, um, the command van, um, staffing, road closures, road departments, sheltering, human services staff, things like that. So we're used to, I'm used to when Cal Fire comes into an incident, they bring all of that stuff to support the incident, and then I can deal with the county level stuff, the human services, the public health, the media, um, social media, all of those things that we need to do, briefing our elected officials and things like that. So the county department's provided a ton of support to us that night, and we're really appreciative of that. And then also the private support. The private support was really great because they started feeding people on their own. Um, the citizens came out and really wanted to support the fire command post, and they did that. They had a dinner, they had a breakfast, they brought coffee, uh, they were going to run equipment if we needed them, although we couldn't do that, but they were there to support, um, willing, willing to support us there. That's the first time I saw 300 little seated pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's no lot, there was 300 pizzas there. Uh, and then lunch the next day, and of course, by county doesn't have to stage there. By county ambulance stayed there with a the full crew to make sure that everybody was rehabbed. We had catering, had water, had ice, packed the lunches for the incoming crews. And so when we, we have crews coming in on mutual aid, we need to be able to support them. And that's exactly what we were able to do. And that's really key to, to remember from a financial standpoint is the citizens really came through and saved us financially in this in this fire. Um, different agencies, man, uh, Rolling Stone Pizza came out and served over 260 pizzas. Um, let me tell you, an inmate on a fire crew has never been served a pizza, and they did. They got pizzas, and they were custom pizzas. They want to come back to start a company. I've talked to you that, but uh, on a, you know, just on a lighter note there. But very seriously, the the public and we have multiple thank yous going out to these. That, uh, that, that assist us. And we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. And we would not have financially, we would have seen a larger financial hit had we did not get the support from the public. So it's very important that we recognize uh, our public and how we came together as a community. All right, so, so before, so we learned some things that night. We learned some things that night, especially me. This was the first incident, the real incident I had gone through here since coming on with the county. Um, I heard all the stories about the Oroville disaster, but I actually got to live this. So this was a good lesson for me. But first off, we have to just um, acknowledge what went well. And John talked about it already, but I want to mention it again. It was the cooperation internally and externally. At my level in the EOC, the coordination and the communication is the number one thing that we do. We provide coordination, we provide resources, and technical specialists to the field forces. Um, so when we call, they came. That's important. Um, I don't know that, uh, I know that other jurisdictions sometimes have issues with that, so I was happy, very happy with that. Um, our communications with dispatch in those initial hours were critical, and those public safety dispatchers were there for me. My only touch to the incident with John for those first couple hours was through a dispatcher. And so that was, that was super um, helpful to me to be able to relay information in our um, operations center and then push it out. The use of the command van was a key 
huge support for John and how fast and quickly that had dispatched from the sheriff's department out to the field was great. And so I think those command van exercises that the county staff has been doing every quarter are well worth uh, their weight in gold. And then uh, we had a lot of support from the city of Yuba City. City of Yuba City really helped us out a lot. Uh, I know on the buyer side, they helped out Chief Salas, and then on my side, coordination of information just to relay what was going on so that they were kept in the loop. And then lastly, as far as what went well for us, and I'm sure there's many more, but I'm just taking some of the highlights, is that coordination and the relationship between uh, Chief Shallows and my office. If we don't have that kind of coordination and that relationship building with our field, then I'm not going to be able to do a huge, a good job for the county. It's going to be tougher for me to do. So, um, so those were the lessons. Those were the what went well. Um, lessons learned. Uh, professional radio communication staff supports public safety departments. So we have a very intricate radio system here in Sutter County, and I'm going to let John talk about that. But one of the things that we're really going to need to start looking at is to employ somebody that can help us maintain that system. So do you want to expand yeah. on that? So basically what we did is we took the advantage of this incident to be able to go through an after-action report uh, and sat with the department heads that were involved and the major players that were involved within this incident, and we were able to take down some things that we learned, uh, things that went well, and things that really didn't go so well. Uh, communications is a challenge. Obviously, in an area like the Sutter Buttes, it's very hard. You would think there's a huge radio tower on the top of the Buttes that we would have great communications. We have some of the worst communications once we get into that area. Uh, and where this first first uh, statement comes out, the proven need of a professional radio communication staff. Um, we're, we are definitely in need of this. A lot of counties uh, employ a public safety radio communications person. Not necessarily just for public safety, but they do radio communications within the county, um, through public works, anybody who has any type of communication systems, they manage those. Uh, we have a very intricate system that's based off of use, which is called the interoperability program. Uh, we can actually talk to any agency. After 9-11, one of the things that came out after 9-11 is that police, fire, uh, emergency services, public works, all that couldn't talk to each other. They were all doing their own thing, and it was anarchy. Whereas we have, we do have that capability to do that. And with that command band that came out, I was able to start patching those things. We did have some issues, had to call more staff in, where if we had this person in place, this would be their job to manage that system. That system is very important also because it allows a lot of us to get grants um, when you have that system in place. When you don't have those types of systems in place, you're not necessarily qualified for a lot of grants that you can look at. Uh, we looked at having a dedicated hotline for the citizens. Uh, we looked at the dispatcher being overwhelmed. We looked at Brenna being all overwhelmed. Um, if anybody in this room tried to call me on my personal cell, I'm sorry, I threw it across my, my truck and I never answered it for two days. Uh, I believe my, within the first hour, my phone was full. <laughs> so we see that, and we need to find a way to stop that type of communication. Where we take those communications, not that we don't give information to the public, that we find a place to put that as one central place, and we get good information, quality intelligence, not information, and not rumors out of the public. Uh, and that's very important that we do that. Yeah. And we're working with IT, and that's something that we can do very quickly here, and we'll be getting that out and getting that up and running shortly over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the other thing that um, was very apparent to me here is that we need to have more people trained on social media and social media communicators to just monitor the traffic and provide updates. Whether there's anything to update or not, we can say that. We can say, you know, there isn't an update to contain a fire at this, at this time, but we'll get you an update in the next hour. So Chuck and I are going to be working on that over the next several months to conduct some of that kind of training and then just recruit internally people that we can call into the operations center and come in and just manage social media uh, so that we can provide more information. That's another way to get information out. And in this world today with social media, we have to be in front of it. Um, and then recruitment of field response key items. Um, Chuck was in the field early. As soon as we called for him, he was there. Uh, however, we need 
more PIO. <coughs> this was a small incident. If we have another Oroville spill away, or if we have floods this winter, we're going to need more people that we can dispatch out to the field. So we're going to look to our public safety departments internally into the county, um, and then look at our cities, ask them for people that we can call up and then um, and dispatch out to the field from a pu public safety standpoint. It's very important that those that respond out the field understand public safety and can speak that language. It's really important for everyone to understand that a lot of these incidents that are going on in the state, each fire has 20 to 30 PIOs on that fire. Um, there is a very, uh, very in-depth, it's something that is now just growing in the public information officer levels of what the information, the public is always more and more demanding. Every time we have more and more emergencies, people want to know. Uh, and they always want to know information faster than we can get it out. And there's always a lot of uh, questions uh, to, to the incident of what we need to do. Chuck did a great job. I, I, I owe him an apology because I was not going to get information to him because I was overwhelmed at the beginning. Uh, but he stood by me and we kept coming up and asking for information. And as we got it, we tried to get it out to him as much as we possibly could. Um, did a great job on a field interview with the news. Kept the news off my back. Thank you for that. Uh, I was a little overwhelmed. <laughs> but anyway, that public, that field response PIOs is something that we're going to be looking to the other. You don't have to be a fireman. You don't have to be uh, a police officer to do this job. You just have to know how to talk to people. So we're going to be looking to the different divisions to assist us in the emergency management management because it doesn't have to be just for fires. It can be anything. And then lastly, on this one, what are the expectations of the staff? So us from our elected officials ahead of time. Uh, we really want to get that nailed down so that we can meet those expectations moving forward. So we know what you expect from us and, and we can try to deliver that to you. Um, so just uh, to, you want to see okay. All right, so I'll cover this a little bit faster. So again, keeping with the theme of getting out information faster to the public, we're working on it. Um, we're getting ready to purchase, execute a contract for an alert warning system that will help us do that much quicker. If I had had that in the POC that night, I could have reached out over multiple phone lines, multiple text messages, and notified everybody that there was a situation going on in the police. Um, wildland firefighting potential contract. So one, one of the things that we addressed that is, is we don't have that Cal Fire influence. Is looking at the possibility, and we're going to be entertaining that with our neighboring Cal Fire unit to see what it would do to put a Cal Fire uh, agency agreement to be able to protect the views. Um, that gets us the whole, the whole gamut of all these PIOs, everything we would need, uh, possibly if the, if the wildland uh, situation was to take off the views, uh, we would be able to call to them. It is a financial thing, contract, and we'll have to see what we can go through. And then an improved web presence on our uh, Southern County webpage, um, an implementation of our GIS, which is Geographic Information System, it's basically mapping. We're going to put real-time mapping up on our webpage and um, social media so that the citizens are fully aware of what's going on in real time as it, as it unfolds. We've already developed that in fact. And then lastly, we're considering looking at having a, what I'm calling a full order emergency operations center somewhere downtown in our civic center offices so that if we have a smaller scale incident we can activate it there rather than going out to Sutter. So and then oh, go ahead. both moving forward so what can you expect from our offices in the coming year um, we're going to do more training we need to train more people we need to practice as well so we're going to do some exercises uh, where we get together and go through a scenario and talk about how we would go through that incident. Um, we talked about the staff. We're updating emergency plans. The plans haven't been updated in this county for several years, so one of the big charges that my office has is to update those plans. Um, we secured a grant with the Department of Water Resources uh, for about $800,000, and we'll be kicking off that project later on this to work on flood response planning and also there's an evacuation planning component to that um, and then also flood fight with our reclamation districts so to improve those relationships on how we're going to respond to flood disasters and then just continued relationship building 
within the operational area. Uh, when I got here, one of my first charges was that we need to build relationships with our partners, and I think we're doing that. Uh, we work very closely with you to see um, right now, and they're, they've been a huge asset to us. And there we go. That's the uh, presentation. If anybody has any questions, obviously we're pushed for time here today. Feel free to contact me or Brenna at our offices. We're happy to sit down and discuss. Any questions in the board? Yes, we have questions. Mr. Um, Chair, first of all, I just want to go with you uh, on, I, I think it was a first class operation myself. I mean, yeah, there, there's some uh, issues that we need to address, and you have professionals will address those in the county. One of my biggest questions is that, you know, I've seen the fire. With all the communication towers that are up there on top, do we ever have any of the preventative maintenance programs that, that will clear off any of that stuff around there and say, hey, if the burns up there, it's not going to touch those towers at all? So uh, that is a privately owned uh, area up there, only for communications. Uh, in great communications with Jake Clay, who runs that from the Moose area, he was actually there at the fire, uh, very appreciative of how we, what we did not do damage. We did very minimal damage to the towers. Uh, actually, it was more like burned up some railroad towns that were uh, that's really what we burned and some very little damage to some uh, internet stuff is up there. Um, yes, I discussed that with him and we're going to be moving forward with a plan to actually get some uh, wildland clearance around those. Uh, it's a very challenging site. It's, it's the back side of it is a cliff. Uh, to get it clean, people have to go on roads and, and use chainsaws and it's it's going to be a very hard project, but yes, Jake is, is willing to work with us to make sure we can get those towers to protect it. It's not any fire. Because, you know, we do have a support for a long time. We do use for it all the time. <coughs> but is there any uh, fire outreach that goes on with the citizens of the government that are using that home? That do not go out and say, hey, you might want to clear this area just in case there's a bus fire again. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the, the staff, my staff, goes out and does new picnic. Uh, they do go out on complaints and they also do education on that. Uh, we can look to address that at a, at a better level, especially in the week. And really doing that public outreach uh, will help, obviously. Once we start moving forward with uh, our alert and warning system, we're going to have a very large media release when we do that. I think that's going to be a perfect time for us to get that information out. One other way we're going to be able to do that is we're going to be updating our local hazard mitigation plan. And mitigation is basically prevention of our priority hazards in the county, and those kinds of projects um, will be in there. And that prep plan is approved by the board. Public information projects, weed abatement projects, uh, fire, uh, 100 foot defensible space projects will be in there that you guys will actually get to review and approve. So obviously we've uh, faced in the last couple of years an uh, you know, evacuation with a little bit and situation here with uh, Fire. Can we see how other counties are, what other counties do to prepare, to prepare for you know, emergency situations? Uh, you know, important those schools, we always uh, have fire drills, earthquake drills, food drills, and stuff like that. So, you know, what are other counties going to do that will benefit us to look at it? Being better prepared for the Yes, absolutely. And that, that is our goal to make sure we. This was an eye opener uh, for me, I know, uh, how we operate at our levels. And we are challenged, as I said, unlike other counties. And we do have our own special challenges within the county. Uh, but we saw an incredible support. Cal Fire has reached out to help me to come up with different uh, answers for that, and how we can get through that, how other counties are doing it, uh, working with the different fire chiefs uh, locally. Uh, great support, obviously, from Sacramento, Sacramento City, Sacramento County. Uh, we have great support all over, and they are willing to help us with everything. Uh, with that DWR and that mitigation stuff that we're going to work on the grant, uh, we'll see a lot of that. A lot of that will come forward. Well, the minute my level, I work with all the surrounding emergency managers, attend their trainings, attend their meetings, their exercises, and so we share best practices all the time. Um, so we'll be implementing things that I've seen happening in Sacramento or in Yolo County and put them in through our planning, training, so through our whole program. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, members of the board, to add to that. Um, interesting that Brenda, John, and I have been talking about doing a mock exercise. And Governor 
we're trying to figure out the right time to do that. And then we had this real uh, life event. So uh, we have done training uh, with Cuba City uh, recently, a few months ago. And we had um, also one before that with the elected officials training that took place. So it's on our to-do list. This was a really good exercise for us, but we'll definitely put that in our to-do list. And we'll share with the board. We'll have a couple of trainings over the next year. So I'll commit now that we do that. We'll do a simulation. What's that? There are already scheduled. Simulated exercises are key. And we're also going to take a look at the buffer question. It's uh, like Twitter for race. Uh, many counties and cities do have buffers. Yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, I like to uh, really remember to say <coughs> control of the uh, vegetation around the tower in there would be great. You know, maybe a crew could bring a group of sheep up there or goats to work that brush and stuff down on a really basic sleep over there. And, and also, I must commend everybody. I think everybody did a fantastic job. Um, considering the whole state was burning at the time to get resources in here, was absolutely incredible. So I think it could have been a really different picture. And I don't know where he found it. What do you got? Under a rock. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you got your records. So uh, a couple of comments from me too. I'd really like to commend you on the job well done. It was, uh, you know, I was prepared to get this thing to get started, but you got it well under control. And the, once the information did get out, then it started coming out. Just knowing that you control the fire and put it out within a short period of time. Um, I look forward to uh, supporting you and thanking others for the resources as well. So if there's anything you need from us in terms of thanking the outside agencies, the, the other county departments that got involved, which we saw everything come to the table. It was, it was great to see all that activity, and especially the private citizens who didn't jump up. I know, I know Brenda, you called one and got her out of bed. You know? yeah. <laughs> I don't remember hearing that, but it's like, like knowing that the resources come together over there. And I think this was uh, a good practice exercise for the real, but you know, knowing that we can handle much larger issues and how we approach those issues is really good. Uh, the question I did have is that I know that in Sonoma County, they have a uh, fire symposium that's being sponsored by the, um, by the county. I'm not sure which department is going to probably fire. Um, so I don't know, maybe you can take a look at how they're doing that, but they're speaking actually more to the public in terms of how to control um, fire issues, you know, how to prepare for disaster in general, and they're, they're pretty actively involved. I know there's some supervisors also working with them on that. So uh, maybe you can take a look at something like that. I think you've had some plans already working with the public, but I'd like to see more of like a town hall sort of uh, environment, maybe one per district or something where you talk to you groups of uh, public and let them know in terms of disaster preparedness. Because we're coming off a big evacuation where everybody was still wondering, you know, which way do we which way do we drive out, what do we do? And there was a lot of panic involved and then, so that, you know, that panic still is lasting. And we, we noted that as as the as the fire was taking place, you know, not only was your phone full, but our phones were built, right? So we got all these calls and we didn't know we didn't, we gotta know what to do with them. And I think it'd be great if we could I'm glad you heard about the practice scenarios and we can just share with the public even more when we can do that. So thank you. Great job. Yes, sir. At one time, she said, uh, up there in the views, we used to spray actually up to the fence line. I noticed there's a lot of water grass clear up the road. Down. Maybe we can pump a little bit of that by you know, a roadside spray. But also, at one time, uh, the landowners were responsible for a visit along the fence on their side, at least the two just with Yeah, so that, that disc line was in place. Uh, this fire moved right through that disc line. So it was just roadside start and it didn't make it past that. And that fact, it burned, it started right at the gas well. So there was a large ground level where it started and the fire had enough potential and it went So it, they, there was some effort made, but yes, I do agree with you, there can be a better way to make a project put into the views to be able to get rid of, stop that roadside. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to give you guys a hand, actually.